Elder J. D. T. McAllister, said it was two years since he had attended conference in the city. Most of the people present are Latter-day Saints and have made covenants with God and each other. We are apt to watch with a scrutinizing eye those men who are placed over us to lead us. We expect to see perfection in them. What should we think if the apostles were to stop at our saloons and take a drink of beer or liquor? Should we not be surprised? And yet how many are there in our midst who do so? And men, too, who hold the holy priesthood and whose examples should be worthy of imitation. Time was when the name of God was scarcely ever heard taken in vain in this city, and those who did blaspheme were soon in the hands of a peace officer. The Sabbath day should be kept holy, and we should teach our children to keep it holy. The amusement provided for our young people, especially dancing, should be controlled by the servants of God, according to instructions issued in circular by President John Taylor. Tithing should be observed by all saints in the time and season thereof, and they should not leave it until the 31st of, of December. It is a daily, weekly, or monthly affair as the case may be. Offerings for the poor and other worthy objects also should be attended to, this being another requirement of the gospel, and we cannot afford to trifle with or neglect it. It is our duty to pray for and sustain the servants of God, who have for so many years borne the heat and burden of the day. We should also read and study the scriptures, the Bible, the Book of Mormon, and other good books. We should strive to live a happy life, and if each member of the family would live as the children of God should live, what a beautiful home such a family would present. There is a great work before us, not only for ourselves, but for our dead also. We can turn the key of their salvation by attending to the ordinances of the gospel in their behalf. We are making a record of our lives in the way of tithing and other things connected with our duties and responsibilities. The books kept in heaven will agree with those kept on the earth. Our religion is one that happifies us in every relation of life. Every child that we have and train aright is a star in that crown that we expect to wear by the by. We should try to educate ourselves in keeping the commandments of God. We should observe the word of wisdom and the spirit and meaning thereof. It takes in a very wide scope connected with all the acts of our lives, and we should be guided thereby. He spoke of the great work that has been done in the temple at St. George. Many appreciated the blessings to be obtained there, while others appeared to think but little about them. Over 182,000 have been officiated for in that temple since it was first opened. He also made a few encouraging remarks on the subject of baptism for the dead, and gave the following statistics of ordinance work in the temple at St. George up to June 1880. Baptisms for the dead, 99,523. Endowments for the dead, 41,791. Ordinations for the dead, 15,889. Sealings for the dead, 14,255. Children dead sealed to parents, 1,314. He said that quite a number of saints in the South were living in the United Order, on the principle laid down in the Doctrine and Covenants, each one living in the Order as God would have them do. The principle of stewardship strictly adhered to, and everything kept clean and orderly. He eulogized the people living in Orderville and described their united and prosperous condition, and prayed the blessings of God upon all the saints.